Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's Common Council meeting. Before we start, we always ask our city clerk to read us a quote for the week. Madam City Clerk. Thank you. You can easily judge the character of a person by how they treat those who can do nothing for them. Thank you, Madam City Clerk. Also, please note a reminder to the, uh, the public that Alderman Hanna will be taking applications for the Board of uh, Water Commissioners, and we will have that election on September 17th. So anyone interested in the public and being considered for the, uh, for the position, is it, can everyone hear? No. No? Lee, would you please get the fans? Steve, can we turn up the volume a little bit, please? Thank you, citizen. Montemayor. Okay, it'll be a little warm in here. Please bear with us. We may have to open windows in the middle. Once again, a reminder to the public, anyone who is interested in serving in the Board of Water Commissioners, submit their application, their interest, letter of interest to Alderman Hanna, President of the Common Council, between now and the next Common Council meeting, which is the 17th. Thank you very much. Call the 11th regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Please call the roll. Boren? Here. Bauk? Here. Gisha? Here. Hannah? Here. Heidemann? Here. Kittleson? Here. Clayunas? Here. Manny? Here. Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Rinfleisch? Here. Ryan? Here. Smith? Here. Vanderweel? Excuse. Verhasselt? Here. And Wangaman? Excuse. 14 present. Quorum is present. Alderman Rinfleisch, would you please lead us, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Rinfleisch. Approval of the minutes, President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Minutes are approved. Mayor's appointments. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, honorable members of the Common Council, hereby submit the following appointments to the Business Improvement District for your consideration. Reappoint Alan Rudnick, Mary Mirande, Richard Granke, and David Gass for new three-year terms to expire 9-10. 2010, signed by the mayor. Those appointments lie over. And there's a letter from Director of Planning and Development, Paulette Enders, to the mayor and council per chapter, excuse me, per charter ordinance number 4-0708. I hereby appoint William C. Balky, the city engineer for the city of Sheboygan, respectfully submitted. And that lies over. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Next item on the agenda is a proclamation for Ustasio Medina, and I would ask that he come forward. Good evening. Good evening, sir. <clears throat> Tonight we have a proclamation for Mr. Medina. This is, uh, as I say, one of the, uh, the part of my job that I really enjoy doing because it's a wonderful, fabulous opportunity to recognize people out in the communities who are doing a tremendous amount of work to make our community better. Uh, we have, our community is blessed with a lot of caring and giving people, and some of them really don't come up to the, to the forefront until some of us recognize them. Ustasio Medina has been around uh, a long time in Sheboygan. His, his family came to Sheboygan a long time ago. They've lived here uh, a long time. They participated and uh, have been extremely good citizens of the city of Sheboygan. In particular, uh, Ustasio Medina, whom we know as Junior uh, Medina, has uh, been very instrumental in, in doing a lot of good for our community. So I think a proclamation uh, declaring a Junior Medina Day is, is appropriate and uh, long overdue. So. Whereas Ustasio Medina, known to his friends as Junior, has devoted himself as a servant to the citizens of the, of the Sheboygan area, and whereas Ustasio Medina has provided leadership by being elected the first Hispanic County Board Supervisor in the state of Wisconsin, serving as a role model 
and whereas Ustacio Medina currently serves as the president of the Hispanic Service Club, and whereas Ustacio Medina raises funding for college scholarships for students of Hispanic descent, and whereas Ustacio Medina continues his community services by also serving on the Board of Directors for Partners for Community Development and the Historical Society, and whereas Ustacio Medina serves as a role model of a true public servant and community leader, I, Mayor Juan Perez, declare September 8th, Ustacio Junior Medina Day. Congratulations. President Hanna, consent agenda. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I move that all ROs be accepted and placed on file, and that all RCs be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Uh, items 11 1 through items 11 16. Motion and second. Is there Alma Meyer? Thank you, Your Honor. I would like to pull 1111 for a separate vote on license number 4913. 1111, an RC by law and licensing recommending granting various licenses, licenses being pulled out for a separate vote. Any objection to that? There being none, I need a motion to put the, uh, to accept and adopt the RC. Is there a second? Second. Motion is second to accept. Under discussion, Alderman Rinkleisch. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll be abstaining from this vote. You abstaining? Thank you. Any other discussion? Please call the roll. Balk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Kleunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. And Verhasselt? Aye. 13 ayes, 1 abstention. Motion carries. Now we will act on 11 1 through 11 16, except in 11 11. Vice President Boren. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, point of order, I wasn't asked to vote on that. I vote aye. Oh, well, no, you were not asked. Thank you, Alderman Boren. <laughs> 13 record, ayes, one abstention. Show, Alderman, <laughs> Vice President Boren voted yes. Okay. And that's only 11-11. Now we'll take all the others. Any further discussion on the balance of the documents? There is none. Please call the roll. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clyunis, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Rinfleisch, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Smith, Aye. Rehasselt, Aye. Boren, Aye. and Bulk. 14 ayes. Motion carries. <laughs> we did vote today. I mean, this time. Okay, moving on. Alderman Montemayor. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to pull forward agenda items 969 and 970. Second. <laughs> We will it's at the very end. Very good. Pulling forward, 969, 970. Is there a motion we need? I move that 969, 970 be put upon their passage. We need a motion to discharge first. I, I would like I to make the motion to discharge. Okay. Second. And there's a second. Under discussion. Um, August 20th. Chairman Verhasselt of Salary and Grievance trusted me to do the uh, Salary and Grievance meeting, and, I, and a lot of things were put on that agenda, and I forgot this one. And I know it's important that we get things in, in on a timely manner, so I'm hoping that by acting on this now, it sort of will correct my error on August 20th when I forgot to even put it on the agenda. Thank you, Alderman Montemayor. Under further discussion, Alderman Verhasselt. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. I do support the concept that which is embodied in these two documents, which is to separate the IS department from the finance department. So that's not my concern. But as chairman of the Salary and Grievance Committee, I am vehemently opposed to this procedural move of discharging my committee and my five members or four members from being involved in this discussion. As luck would have it, our meeting was scheduled tonight right prior to the council meeting. So we did have the opportunity, even though it technically won't count on paper, we did have the opportunity to discuss these two documents. Um, I think it sets a dangerous precedent to start pulling documents out of committee before they even get to committee, which is what the scenario was here. Because the nice thing about committee, being in committee with any document, is that it allows employee input, which this document's 
directly impacts city employees, but it also allows citizens the opportunity to weigh in on, a, on any discussion. And by pulling things out of committee before they even reach committee, we're, we're basically putting the employees and the citizens in the backstage, and I don't think that's a good idea. Um, like I said, this sets a horrible precedent, and I'm going to vote against the procedural move, but I do support the concept of separating IES from finance. Thank you, Alderman Rehassel. Alderman Rinsleich. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I agree. I think it's, it's a horrible precedent to pull it out of the uh, Salary and Grievances Committee. If we look at the uh, noticing function of the, um, uh, the committee structure, it comes to the committee, it comes through Common Council first, gets submitted to a committee where public has their say at that point in time. If we do not discuss it in that committee, discharge it, bring it back here, and vote on it, in my mind, it really hasn't had its full communication, its full sense of ability that the public can have a say on this aspect. And again, perhaps the public doesn't really care about any of the issues regarding this one, uh, but once we do it for this one, we can do it for other ones as well. So I'm also going to vote no on the procedural move. <coughs> Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. Are we just voting now on the procedural move? Yes. Okay. Well, and I'll save my comments for later. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> just so you know, that procedural is permitted by Robert Rules of Order. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, as Alderman Berhasselt has explained, we, we did talk about this tonight in committee, and this has been approved through the committee, and I don't see any reason why we should let it lay around for a couple more weeks. Um, we need to get these things in place. We, we've been sitting on this for a couple of weeks. As Alderman Montemayor said, when she ran the meeting a couple of weeks ago, she had forgotten to put this on the agenda. And since then, she had tried to schedule another meeting, and that was canceled. There was a previous meeting also scheduled last week. That was also canceled. That would have addressed this issue. So I don't see any reason why we, we can't vote on this tonight. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. Alderman Montemayor. Uh, Thank you, Your Honor. And I can understand the concerns of Alderman Verhasselt and Alderman Winfleisch. I can. This particular thing that we're talking about tonight is something that has been addressed by the public and by employees over the last two years at the salary and grievance meetings. It isn't something brand new. It is something that the council, not the council, the committee members and the public and the people involved have had a chance to talk with. It isn't something like that they did not. Thank you. Alderman Manny, you're next, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, my simple question is to committee members who met recently here this evening, did you have adequate discussion? Alderman Meyer says that you did vote to affirm this. Uh, was it unanimous? Uh, were there strong uh, reservations offered by citizens? A quick summation of that meeting, I think, would be helpful. Your Honor, could I address that as committee chair? Yes, so you're next anyway, so go ahead. Thank you for the question, Alderman Manny. But yes, we did approve it with some amendments to the wording of the document on 970, if you refer to the document. In the very first lead-in paragraph, instead of the words under the direction of the mayor, the wording will be changed to fall in line more with all of our existing director, department directors, which is going to now read, or at least the amendment suggestion is reports to the mayor. And then there was a small just housekeeping issue with the numbering down below. If you can see, the numbers don't quite follow right below that. So those were the, uh, the two issues brought up, but otherwise we accepted it as amended. I did want to, if I could, also share, seeing I am next on the agenda, uh, this, this is a brand new document. I granted the discussion's been hovering around. There's a lot of discussions in city government, state government, federal government. Issues hang around for a long time. But this is a brand new document. This is a very brand new document. I guess my question is what's next? And again, I support the idea that's embodied here. I just don't like the procedural move here because what's next if we see something in finance or something in public works that we think, hey, that doesn't quite need the attention that they think it needs. Let's just pull it back into the council and get this thing moving. Um, again, we're cutting out citizens. We're cutting out employees. We're cutting out some good pieces of information that are part of our system, the way we set up our government. So. Um, it's a procedure that's rarely used. It was used earlier this spring, which before that, I don't know the, the previous time it had been used, been used. But even the most important thing about this is that there's no basis for it. And I, and I say that perhaps somebody will stand up and try to lay out some basis for this move. But having talked to yourself, the mayor, 
in Alderman Montemar over the last week. We had discussions outside of the council chambers as to their motivation behind what was the idea. Because typically this move would be used for a situation of emergency. Maybe we're trying to hire some new personnel. We need to get paperwork moving along and so on. But through my discussions with Alderman Montemayor and through Mayor Perez, no basis was really realized or observed through those discussions. So that's probably the most concerning or alarming thing about this entire thing is why are we pulling this out of committee <coughs> prematurely? Thank you, Alderman Brassel. Alderman Rainsfly, second time. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Alderman Brassel actually answered some of my questions regarding this. Um, Point number one, it is a new document. And yes, the issue has been discussed. Um, and yes, Robert's Rules allows us to discharge the, the committee from that. Uh, but be, above and beyond that, I think the, no, the noticing issue is a big issue. Uh, was the committee uh, given the full notice this time around? That's the first question I would have for Alderman Verhassel. Was it on tonight's um, agenda for salaries and grievances? Was what on the agenda? Were these two documents on that agenda? They were By on numbers. The agenda. Okay. Okay, so the, the first issue that I would have has actually been satisfied. Uh, the fact that it has been satisfactorily noticed, and I would ask t uh, two questions to Attorney McLean. Does that satisfy the notice required uh, by the state uh, that it comes from immediately after that committee to this one? And I think it does, but I want to ask you. And two, if it's a Roberts Rules procedure, what are the, um, uh, what's the percentage needed to, to pass this? Is it 50 50 or is it two thirds or three quarters? <clears throat> it's, uh, you want to answer? It's a majority vote. Some majority? We're, we're, uh... The motion and the notice of intent to make the motion to discharge the committee is on the agenda. It only requires a simple majority vote. Okay. And the first part of your question, again, Alderman Rinfleisch, was? Um, thank you, Attorney. Uh, was the notice on the agenda and salary and grievances committee satisfactory for the public to have that discussed to bring it to this meeting immediately thereafter? Uh, no, that, that requires some reference from salary and grievance to the council, which... Which is what this is, then. Well, this isn't from salary and grievance. This is taking it out of salary and grievance. Uh, typically, salary and grievance would meet as they met this evening. Uh, had they intended to place it on the agenda, I guess... They could have placed it on the agenda knowing that they're going to meet in advance of the meeting okay. and come out with a committee report. Uh, there is no reference to a committee report here on the council agenda. That is typically what the re reply from the committee is, some committee report with respect to the documents, and that's not here. So the committee, I'm going to ask the chairman again if I may, uh, it was not necessarily the intent for it to come from this committee immediately here, is that correct? And we realized, or at least I realized, and I think the committee did as well, that the discussion while it was on the agenda was going to have no basis in tonight's council meeting other than explaining what our opinions were. I planned as chairman to share, as I did to Alderman Mandy, what our suggestions, what our discussion had been. Okay. But we realized there was no paper trail that was going to actually find the council. Let's, let's so, follow a protocol and address the chair when we're, when we're debating here. Oh. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Mayor. My apologies towards that. Um, then, uh, hearing that answer uh, from the committee chairman, um, I believe that we have a reason why we have committee structures, uh, not only for the public interest, um, but as well that that committee, I think, best addresses the issues at hand. Uh, I will defer to that committee chairman and his wishes to vote against this today, and I urge you all to do so as well. Um, I think that we can't possibly know every detail going on in those committees um, unless we attend them all regularly and... Otherwise, we'd all be on committees like the school district has, where everyone, I think that everyone is on this, the committees are divided up into. Okay, sorry, Mr. Mayor. Um, so I'll, I will ask that we all defer to the wishes of the committee chairman and uh, vote no on this right now. I, I think the, uh, there's people, I just want to weigh in a little bit here. Uh, I know some of them are concerned that perhaps we're not giving the public ample time in which to participate in, in any deliberation if, if there's a need to. Yes, you have. This has been on the agenda several times. Canceling and rescheduling the meeting by a chair does not allow the public either when they were planning to do that. We have issues that lie over. That doesn't allow the public to weigh in either. This is not something that's so dramatic that everybody's stunned by this. We, we operate these meetings using Robert Rules of Order. And to say that we can't use one and try to rationalize it and couch it in terms of denying the public anything I don't know that we should be doing that. If rubber rules of order are there, then it's our 
our job to avail ourselves of the, of the rules of procedure so that we can conduct the business in the manner we're expected to do. Alderman Bulk. Bulk. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd just like to ask uh, either the committee chair or uh, Alderman Montemayor, what's the downside of waiting? What, would, what do we lose if we wait until the next uh, let it come around? Well, Alderman Montemayor, please uh, respond to that. Uh, thank you. More time. This should have been on tonight's agenda if everything had gone the way it was supposed to. And now it is on tonight's agenda. It, it has been a concern of mine, and I've expressed it with Alderman Verhassel, that the way the meetings are being scheduled right now, they, they, they don't come before you until two weeks later. Every other standing committee's uh, work comes before you for the next council meeting. Like tonight, you're referring documents to a standing committee. They'll come before us the next council meeting. The way it's being done now, these documents don't come before us the next council meeting. They come before us the next council meeting. So everything's being held. It's been held back. Uh, that's been a concern of mine, Alderman Bob. Yes, sir? Thank you, Your Honor. So in, in terms of, of money or urgency of, of this structure, is the city losing anything, I guess, is what I'm, I'm asking if we, if no. we wait. Uh, thank you. No, we're not losing anything. It, this item probably should have been on the agenda two and a half weeks ago. And now, if, if, if we don't address it tonight, it'll be another two, and a, two weeks from now. And I don't know, would it then be on the agenda? Or would we have to wait for two weeks after that? <laughs> Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You know, it's, it's been said uh, the, the wheels of government turn very slowly. I don't know who coined that phrase. I wish I did, uh, but I don't believe it needs to be that way. Uh, you know, our, our job as a council is to move city business along. Uh, procedurally, there are no legal issues here. To bring it back in two weeks to do the same thing again, to me, doesn't make any sense. Uh, let's pass this tonight and get on with business. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Alderman Cleunas. Thank you, Your Honor. I just had a question. Operationally, is this affecting those two departments, the technology department and the finance department, by the fact that nothing is happening? Is that hurting their operation on a day-to-day -day basis? I know we don't have a, a, chair, a chairman of fi a financial director right now, and this was all under him. And so now the deputy finance director is carrying both areas. Um, is that a, a hardship or whatever? I don't know if we can answer that. Yeah, uh, that'd be a department question, and we don't have the person here. Okay, anybody else? Third time, I'll allow it. Alderman Verhassel. Thank you, Your Honor. Again, I just wanted to point out, you know, the, the disturbing thing about this precedent, it's not, again, it's not the idea, but it's the fact that this document has arms and legs that will find its way back to this committee because we're separating the department, which is fine and it's a good idea, but we're gonna have salary and grievance issues that find its way back, so to pull documents away from a committee before they see them, and then the residual documents that come from, the, that are born out of that document, it's, we're sort of being blindsided in some respects if we start doing that sort of thing on a regular basis, so, um, that's a challenge that I think every council member should think about. As far as your, the mayor's concern, Alton Mayor Perez, regarding my meeting dates, you, you were at the meeting tonight and we talked about my situation, my personal situation as it relates to the dates that I use for my committee meetings. I guess my question though to you is, is your concern gonna lead to future discharges because I'm holding these meetings at a time that's not pleasing to you? Is it gonna lead to future discharges as well? Of future discharges of what, Alderman? Of future documents of our committee, I should say, future discharges so asking, of our committee. You're asking me, and I didn't put it on the agenda, okay? Uh, that was requested by Alderman Montemayor, so you you're best address that to her at another, another time after the meeting or so, okay? I believe you share the same concern. That's why I addressed it, so I apologize. But I believe you share the same exact concern. I share the concern because you and I have had that discussion about putting things on the agenda that don't come up before the agenda with a regular council meeting until two weeks later. And I, I should let the, the element just focus on one thing. The issue has been have we let, have we allowed public input and discourse? Tonight, the committee, is, I was present at the Cellular Greens Committee meeting. They discussed it. 
They debated it. They voted unanimously. It's already done. If that hadn't happened, then perhaps I would be objecting to discharging a committee. But that's already happened. So now you're going to wait two weeks just because you want to wait for two weeks. It, if that hadn't happened tonight, then I, I probably would be agreeing with you, Alderman Rahassel. But the committee has already voted in favor, approved it. Why are we going to wait two weeks? We are a council that's expected to make decisions in the best interest of the community. The decision has already been made by the committee, and I think we should move on. Well, we got more people. Mm -hmm. Alderman Meyer, second time. Thank you, Your Honor. And I just want to say again, we have had two meetings scheduled that would have addressed this issue, and it would have put this on the agenda for tonight, and both those meetings were canceled. I was never notified as to why they were canceled. I was prepared to be there. And as Mayor just stated, we discussed this tonight. It was debated. There was no input from any public at this meeting. Even the people that this addressed did not speak any concerns. So apparently they're fine with this. It's been unanimously voted on, and we should just move on and take care of it. Thank you. Alderman Bauk. Thank you, uh, I, I initially thought, you know, procedurally, we don't want to set a precedent here. We don't want to go down that slippery slope of reaching into committees and usurping the power of committee chairman and such. Uh, so I was inclined to vote against it. But now, given what uh, Alderman Ryan has said and that what the mayor has said about this is business, we know how it's going to turn out in two weeks. Nothing we do tonight is going to change how it's going to turn out in two weeks. So, uh, so in the interest of expediency, I'm going to vote. Uh, yes, with the caveat that I will be very wary of, uh, of this discharge happening uh, very frequently. That would be troubling indeed. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Alderman We have one more. Alderman Manny, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Appreciate those comments, and I concur with those. Uh, I simply want to note also that in, in March and April last year with previous counsel, there was much public input at that point, much input from city employees. So. There has been latitude of many months for this kind of input to be a part of the public discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Manny. Okay, we will call a vote on the motion to discharge the committee first. Please call the roll. Hannah? Yes. Heideman? No. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinflesh? No. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Verhasselt? No. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. And Gisha? No. Nine ayes, five noes. Motion carries. All one to my order. Now I need a motion to uh, put the ordinance 69 and 70 upon their passage. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Ordinances. Is there a second to that? Second. second. Under discussion, we have Alderman Verhassel. Thank you, Your Honor. Under discussion, I'd like to uh, make a motion to amend the document 970, as we stated earlier, under the term position summaries, to strike the words under the direction of and replace it with the words reports to. Second. Also, to amend the word the numbering system down below. Second. Thank you, Alderman Rehessel. Uh, motion and second. Under further discussion, Alderman Rinfleisch? Um, no discussion, just point of uh, order, I guess. Does this, does this need suspension since it has not lied over in this committee yet? No. Nope. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Please call the roll. Could you hold on just one second? Could you repeat the motion, please? Is it to report to? Is that what you. The, the word, we'll be striking the words under the direction of in the lead in paragraph and replace it with the words reports to. So it'll read reports to the mayor and is responsible for providing assistance and direction, so on and so forth. And that's in the job description, not in the actual document. Yes, right under position summary. OK, this is on the amendment. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? For Hasselt, Aye. Boren, Aye. Bauk, Aye. Gisha, Aye. and Hannah. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Now I need a motion to put the resolution upon its passage as amended. No. no. 
We've got two ordinances going we may want to do separately. We'll take uh, 969 first, Alderman Razor. Mm -hmm. Can I ask that the general ordinance be accepted and adopted by the passage? Second. Yeah, second. And was that amended? That wasn't amended. Okay. okay we will need a discussion. We will call the roll. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunas. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. No. Ryan. Aye. Smith. No. Verhasselt. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. And Heidemann. Aye. 12 ayes and 2 noes. Motion carries. 970. Alderman Verhasselt. I ask that document 970, General Ordinance 260708, be accepted and put upon its passage. Second. As amended. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? No. Ryan? Aye. Smith? No. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann aye. and Kittleson. Aye. 12 ayes, 2 noes. Motion carries. Report of officers 2, 11 17, and 11 18 lies over to November 26. 11 19 through 11 30 to be referred. Resolutions introduced 3, 11 31. Through 11:34, lies over. 11:35 and 11:36 to be referred. Report of committee seven, 11:37 by law and licensing, recommending denying Class B liquor license application number 2490, based on involvement in violations at the premises under the current license holder. The committee's concern about the lack of sufficient change in the ownership's group from the current owner who has a recent lengthy history of law violations at the premises and concern that the proposed use is not in the best interest of the city as determined by the committee standards for issuing licenses. Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. If I could go back on uh, 1134, uh, the ones, the 1131 through 1134 that we're going to be uh, ly lying over to 917, uh, I would like uh, document number 1134 referred back to the Salary and Grievance Committee. So I make a motion that document number 1134 be referred back to Salary and Grievance. There's a motion to uh, refer 1134 back to Salary and Grievance. Is there a second? Second. Under discussion. Uh, under discussion, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, the, I attended uh, one of the Salary and Grievance Committee meetings. Uh, in fact, the reason I remember it distinctly is because it was a Salary and Grievance Committee that was held in the council chambers. And uh, my issue with uh, this memorandum of agreement, and for the people watching on television, uh, this document has to do with uh, an agreement for wages, among other things, with the, with the fire department, and also a residency, a residency requirement uh, at the Salary and Grievance Committee that I attended, the Salary and Grievance Committee uh, gave uh, uh, Mr. Surik uh, the directions to discuss uh, with the various unions, and I stress the word discuss, not negotiate, on my document number 751 that's on hold by Salary and Grievances, and this was the document, uh, the resolution that I brought in back in July having to do with all new city employees uh, that are hired, uh, that they become residents of the city of Sheboygan. Nowhere in my document does it say that this is going to be for five years, three years, or eight years, or ten years. It simply says that all new hired employees, if this resolution 751 goes into effect, those people will need to be residents of the city of Sheboygan. Now I understand that uh, this has to be discussed with the unions before this, this could uh, take effect. And that was the charge that Mr. Surik was given at that Salary and Grievance Committee meeting, was to discuss this with the unions, not negotiate or open up contracts, but to discuss it with the unions and report back the reaction of the unions to the Salary and Grievance Committee before they would move forward 
and, and, and possibly any negotiations with any of the unions regarding my, uh, regarding my uh, residency requirement. So I want to send this back to the Salary and Grievance Committee to take another look at this document before it comes back to the Council. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President Bourne. Under further discussion to refer back to committee, Alderman Verhessel. I just wanted to again offer my support for Alderman Bourne on the move because, again, the, the as salary and grievance chair, I can attest, and the minutes, the minutes will attest to it as well, that it was never authorized. And that might be a meaningless point to some. However, I think, again, there needs to be some, some rules followed here. Uh, besides the fact that it wasn't off, authorized, the residency goals were never met by Alderman Boring, who, who was the author of the residency um, resolution. We were far from reaching what we had anticipated there. Besides that, it probably is, is most, is, as disturbing as anything is the fact that if we approve, or at least move in the direction of approving this, We'll have no, nothing to base this increase. The large part of it that concerns me is the fact that we're offering a pay increase. When I was told by Chief Listowski here earlier this summer that the union would work within the confines of their existing contract, um, obviously that's not the case. And it bothers me that Chief Listowski, commander, and one of the fire commanders are part of our city's negotiating team, negotiating on the taxpayers' behalf. Um, again, I was informed of that. So I think. The fact that we don't have any comparables to even say is 6% way too much. Maybe it's way too little. Maybe we should be offering more. I, God forbid that's the case. But we don't have any comparables within hand right now. And I talked to Ed Sirk, our human resource director, and Chief Lestowski. We have comparables that would indicate what percent increase was offered to comparable departments around the state that made the same transition. But to a, to a, to a, 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 how do I want to, a labor attorney, I think Jim Scott is our labor attorney. After discussing with this with him, that percentage increase is meaningless in arbitration. The number that he's going to be looking at is the, the actual total amount of salary. So if we're starting, perhaps the salary for our people are already in line as, the, as they currently are. We don't know the answer to that. So we need to get comparables of actual salary numbers, not just percentage increases. Again, a, a labor attorney is going to throw those right out the window, an arbitrator would as well, according to our labor attorney. So I think we need to go back, do a little more homework, and make sure that we've got a good agreement in place so the whole council can move forward in a confident fashion. Thank you, Alderman Hassel. Alderman Keisha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, one of my most favorite movies of all time is Groundhog Day. And every time the fire department gets brought up, it seems like the movie Groundhog Day with some. It, uh, Groundhog Day is a great movie. It's the guy who relives the same day over and over and over again for months and months and months. And that's kind of how I feel about what's going on here. Uh, there's been a couple of statements made that I'd like to clarify. First of all, I hear Ed Surick didn't do the right thing and say the right thing. Chief Listowski didn't do the right thing or say the right thing. Those are very serious ac accusations. <laughs> very serious accusations. And, um, and, and, and I, I, I hope they were thrown out with much thought, uh, because it, it sets a bad tone and, and really misrepresents. If you're incorrect, uh, that is quite the label to put on an individual. Uh, I, would, uh, I would hope that there would be more than just the statement and some actual documentation or fact that that would be the case. Second, uh, at a meeting I was at at Salary and Grievance, comparables were given between 4 and 7 percent across the state of Wisconsin is what the paramedic uh, ambulance premium is. And I'll tell you right now, if the, union, if the fire department union wants to go to arbitration right now, because we're starting this January 1, they'll get, your, they'll get 6%, or they'll at least get between 4 and 7%. This agreement isn't giving them anything. We've done financial studies on this, talk about having additional discussion and studies. This agreement actually gives the city of Sheboygan back almost $13,800, and I have the data, back to the city up until the, this new contract ends. What's bad about that? If we have a problem with it's only five years residency, well, they're the only ones who ever talked to us about residency before. Nobody will talk to us about residency. None of the unions will. I'm not even sold on residency, but I understand it's a very hot point for a lot of people. This is our first kick of the cat at residency, but apparently it's not good enough. It's got to be more. It's got to be more. Um, it was mentioned Jim Scott, who's our city attorney, uh, labor negotiation, labor attorney. Jim Scott's opinion of this. And, and I'll back my statement up. I'll ask Ed Surick to back me up if he wishes. 
believes this is one of the finest agreements he's ever seen in an arrangement like this. He's an independent guy, nobody involved with politics or Groundhog Day that we're dealing with here. Here's a guy who's an independent guy that we pay to give us independent opinions, and he says it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. So, to recap, City of Sheboygan over the life of the term of the current contract with the fire department gains $13,800 if you add up all the things they're given back. Bad thing or good thing? You decide. Sounds like a good thing to me. Two, it's the best, one of the better deals our independent attorney has ever seen. Bad thing or good thing? To me, that sounds like a good thing. And uh, comparables, we have that as well. So tonight we seem to be throwing things back to committees and then pulling things back out of committees. Uh, but in this case, the committee did its work. It voted on it. We had a lot of discussion. It now will, should lie over, and I urge people not to vote to pull this back into committee once again, because I'll tell you exactly what will happen. I'm no brain surgeon, but the union has already voted on this. We now have a negotiated point. If I was a union guy and our union, and suddenly a deal that's been struck by our bargaining committee is now pulled out the rug from underneath them, I'd say, guess what, boys, we're starting over. You'll get none of the stuff that gains the financial edge to the city of Sheboygan. None of it. It'll all be gone. So throwing the baby out with the bathwater because you have an issue with it or with a procedure, fix those procedures. But don't screw up something that's good that came out of it. Thank you. Thank you, Gilman Gisha. Just as a, uh, and I say this very respectfully, address the chair so we don't, Alderman Polk. Next Thank you, Your Honor. We, we got the lights on like a Christmas tree here, so. I bet. Right. Um, I, I think my colleague Alderman Gisha has done a great summation of, uh, of things, so I won't belabor those points. Everything he said is factually accurate. I'm not a member of the Salary and Grievances Committee, but I was at the, the, the committee meeting that night when comparables were discussed and questions were thrown at Mr. Surik and, and he answered them. Uh, I, I have been involved tangentially uh, from, the, from the beginning of this ambulance proposal and again, whether you agree with it or not, whether you're a fan of it or not, uh, this is a fantastic deal where there has been much give and take and uh, I urge us to not send it back to the Salary and Grievance Committee and, and I have a question if I may Mr. Chairman uh, for Alderman Boren. If you say that your intention is to send this back so that it can be, and you stress, not negotiated but discussed. It, all, it almost seems like there's a de facto desire to have it renegotiated. And my concern is if you do that, uh, uh, I, I believe Alderman Gish is right and we'll, uh, uh, we'll be ripping up this agreement and uh, we'll get whatever we're willing to pay for with the, uh, with the union. So my question to Alderman Boren is, does he really want a discussion or is he using the word discussion to force a de facto renegotiation? Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Alderman Bob. Next we have Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I agree 100% with Alderman Gisha. I also was at the meeting with uh, Alderman Gisha and, and Bauk when this was discussed. This is a good agreement. And it seems to me certain members on the committee felt that Ed Surik did not have the authorization to come up with this agreement. This is a, this is a, signed, agreement, a signed, signed agreement with the union. It's not, it wasn't signed to be renegotiated. It's signed to be accepted or to be thrown in the trash can. If the council turns this down, I don't know, I can't guarantee this, but we will probably end up in arbitration. In arbitration, you're not going to get any five-year residency acceptance. That, they threw that in as a, as, a, uh, as a bone to the city. They're not going to agree to that. It's not even part of the negotiations. We're going to begin negotiating salaries. We're going to be, you know, we have 24 paramedics. There's been people throwing out there that there's going to be 48 paramedics. They've agreed to 24 on this. This is a good agreement. But this is an agreement that wasn't, wasn't signed to be opened up and renegotiated. If it's not accepted, it's in the garbage can and we're starting over. I think we need to understand that. Just because certain people feel on the committee that they did not point to Ed Surik and say you have the authorization to, to, to make this agreement. There's no reason to take a fine agreement and trash it. So we need to pass this. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. We have one more. Alderman Verhassel. 
Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just to clarify on this agreement again, I had a number of long discussions with Jim Scott, our labor attorney, and this actual agreement is not a trash or accept sort of arrangement. The way this works, this process works, according to Jim Scott, Scott, excuse me, is that if we refuse this document tonight as a council or send it back to committee and the committee decides, hey, we don't quite like those numbers, we have the opportunity to present a final offer, as does the fire the fire union, Local 483. They have the option of presenting their final offer. We put the two side by side and we work to an agreement, and if that agreement cannot be reached, then it would go to arbitration. So it's not a trash or accept situation that we're sitting at here currently. Um, again, as committee chair, it's not so much that the uh, committee was ignored, and I, and I think it was an honest mistake by Mr. Surik. I think it was just a misunderstanding. I think there's a lot of things going on with the fire department right now with the ambulance service and a lot of things going on with both departments. So I think it was an honest mistake, and it's not my attempt, or I don't think it's the committee's attempt to go after Mr. Surik in that way. But the intention of the committee, and Chief Listowski, commander, uh, one of the commanders, as well as Jim Bourne and a number of other aldermen, were at the salary and grievance that the residency requirement came up. And that's what spurned this entire, this entire document, was Jim Bourne's residency resolution. Okay, and the idea, the understanding, and Alderman Gisha and I had this discussion, Alderman Heidemann and a few others, that the idea was that we'd send it out, kind of feel them out a little bit and see, hey, are we way off course on this thing? Are they gonna ask for the moon? If so, we'll walk away. Because I think Alderman Bourne, as well as myself, being one of the co-authors, we were fully prepared to walk away from this thing if they were asking too much. And I think it's the feeling of myself um, and some other Alderman right now that they're asking too much, so we're not interested. Um, but again, we're in where we are where we are right now, so we have to deal with the situation. As far as what an arbitrator, what a labor attorney would agree and say this is a great deal or would give them their six or seven percent. There's not a person in this room that I'm aware of that can predict that with any degree of certainty because we do not have comparable. We have comparables that I got from Chief Listowski two meetings ago. I think there's 25, there's a number of, a number of municipalities from around the state, range from very small to very large. Not a single number in there refers to the actual salary amount, for instance. If Eau Claire started all their fire slash paramedics, firefighter slash paramedics at $100,000, and Sheboygan already was at $100,000 for their firemen, and we added that new responsibility, an arbitrator might look at it and say, okay, they're already up to par with what they were paying their firemen, so this added responsibility puts them at par with the rest of the state. We don't have that $100,000, and we don't have that solid salary figure to even work from. So for anybody to stand up here and say, well, an arbitrator is going to give them this without, without even discussion, or a labor attorney is going to agree with that, there's nobody here that can say that, honestly. I, the numbers don't exist. And I've asked for them, but all I got was the smaller, more incomplete number. So um, leave it at that. Thank you, Alderman Hassel. We have two more. Alderman Ryan, second time. Thank you once again, Your Honor. Anybody that believes that the fire department is going to negotiate something that is more than this, that they're going to, when, when this is rejected and you're going to start over and they're going to say, oh, okay, we'll go for permanent residency and we'll go for no pay increases, it's not going to happen. They came up with this offer to the city for expediency to get the ambulance uh, issue moving, to get up and running by January 1st, and because they believe in the ambulance issue, they want it to succeed. They want the, you know, they, they, they're taking this on as a department. I mean, I did not vote for it myself, but they are taking this on as a department. And the, the rank and file of the fire department have agreed to this because they want the ambulance service to succeed. They want it to be successful. They want it to be profitable. If this is rejected, I know I, don't, I, can't, I can't say it for a fact because I, you know, I can't predict the future. They're not going to come back with something that's better than this. They've done this to expedite the process that we can get the ambulance issue moving. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Alderman Rainflesh. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, once again, I, we have the chairman of a committee that would like to have it back, it's from what I understand. Once again, we have someone else on that member of the committee who would like this to discuss again, and I'm going to support that move again. I think that... Uh, um, if there's other concerns about that, we should hear that. Now, we've heard about they're not going to come back. Well, I would love a new car. I'm going to walk into Sheboygan Chevrolet. The cars were $30,000. i am going to offer $15,000. they are going to turn me down. 
If I want some kind of arbitrator or something, they're going to come back and offer me some amount higher than that. That's called negotiations. And I, for one, would like to see what else happens. They've already put on their residency. This sounds to me like the minimum residency that they would accept at some stretch of the imagination, but maybe they'll take more. I don't know. I haven't negotiated with them yet. Um, we haven't offered them yet anything. They've offered this to us. You know, what kind of negotiation will we do when not come back and counteroffer? Uh, and simply to say, there won't be anything else for the other. I have no idea, but I would like to see something else. Um, one, once again, we have not seen the actual comparison. We've heard of four to six percent, based on what number? Six percent of one hundred thousand is a lot more than four percent of, or a lot less than four percent of two hundred thousand. And you have to look at where, what basis are we looking at? That percentages, percentages can be faulty. Um, so if they don't have that agreement, uh, that basis, then what are we really voting on? Six percent of what? Four percent of what? Uh, second, all, re residency requirements. I find it tough to believe that absolutely no city, municipality, county, township has some kind of residency requirement that is permanent. And now, if we're going to arbitration, they can probably look at that and say, well, other cities have that. We need something more. As this states, um, if someone who has been an employee for five years prior to hire can move out of town the day after they get hired. And we still have the problem of then paying time uh, and a half from when overtime from when they get called from their, their, their residency. So I see areas that need improvement. It, you know, if the question is, are we voting on this today or not, no. Then I'm going to vote no on this one right now. Um, hopefully we'll get some more. That's not the question. The question is, do we send it back to committee or not? Um, so uh, I'm going to support that move, and I would ask that we call the question. Is there a motion to call the question? Motion to call. There's a motion, and is there a second to call the question? Is there a second? Second. Motion to call the question requires a majority vote. Please call the roll. <clears throat> Manny? Aye. Meyer? No. Montemayor? No. Renfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Warren? Aye. Bauk? No. Gisha? No. Hannah? Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? No. Ann Kleonis? Aye. Eight ayes, six noes. Motion carries. Questions has been called. We are going to vote on item number 1134 by Alderman Verhassel, Montemayor, Heidemann, Gisha, and Meyer accepting the memorandum of agreement with the City of Sheboygan and Local 483 IAFF. And that is a motion and second to refer back to salary, salary agreements, agreements salary and grievances committee. Alderman oh, Bug, before we take the Thank motion. you, Honor. Just a point of uh, clarity. Uh, an I vote is to refer it back to the committee. Correct. Thank you. Yes, I'll reiterate that. If you vote yes, you're referring this back to committee. If you vote no, it lies over the way it's presented on the agenda. Please call the roll. Meyer? No. Montemayor? No. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? No. Smith? No. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? No. Gisha? No. Hannah? No. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? No. Clayunis? Aye. And Manny? No. Five eyes, nine noes. Motion has been defeated. 1134. <laughs> 11.34 will lie over. Back to report of committee seven by 11.37 by our law and licensing, Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I would move that the uh, RC uh, be filed. Second. Motion to uh, accept and adopt 11.37. Under discussion, Vice President Boren. Uh, we want to we want to file 11:37 tonight. Oh, you just file it. Report of committee. Yeah, okay. we want we want to file it. There's a motion and second to file. Um, is there a second to file 11:37? Motion and second to file 11:37. Any discussion on that? Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Your Honor. Just to make it uh, clear to the uh, council members here, um, this uh, individual has withdrawn her application, so that is why this is being filed. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. 1137 has been uh, moved to file. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 
1138 by law and licensing recommending referral of the three pre-applications for an available Class B liquor to the full council for them to hear the presentations by the applicants as the committee could not reach a consensus. There will be a five minute limitation for each presentation. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, we have, I believe, uh, two applicants here tonight to give us presentations and I'm going to call on first the uh, 921 Bar and Grill. If you'd step forward, please. We need a motion to accept the call first before he does that. Okay. Please use the mic and uh, just hold on a minute. We do need a motion to accept and adopt that report of committee, though. Uh, hold so, so move. Thank you. Motion and second to accept and adopt. And then under discussion, we have a presentation. The mic is on. And excuse me, could you both give me your names? My name is Anthony Bray. Anthony. Okay. Please hold on a minute. Attorney McLean says we need to take a vote on the motion to accept and adopt, and then we're going to open up the floor to these individuals to present for the final approval. So on the motion to accept and adopt the reported committee, we'll just call a roll call. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, now, just to keep it closed, would you please move to open the floor to a non-department head? Uh, 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 move to open the floor to a non-department head. Second. 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 All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Floor has been open. You've got the floor. And. Alderman Rick Weiss. Uh, accepted and uh, adopted the report of committee. RC, is that correct? Yes. Uh, but if there's any motions to actually more information to apply for a license, do we need to come back to committee with that one, or is that an appropriate time today? So Turn clean. There's no document now to actually grant permission, which is why it was sent to this committee in the first place. Um, yeah, I, I think that'll be coming out of this discussion, and this isn't to grant a license, but to give direction to apply, really. So I think uh, it's consistent with the document that is on the agenda. So we'll be looking for a motion after the presentation. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Please continue. Okay, now I need your name. Anthony Bray, owner of 921 Bar and Grill. Okay, hold on. How do you spell your last name? B R A Y. B R A Y, and the owner of 920. 921 Bar and Grill. Okay. And you will have, let me get my little oh. trusty thing here. Can I get your name also, please? Jennifer Stengel. Co-owner of 921 Bar and Grill. Okay, Jennifer, S-T-E-N-G-E-L? Yes. Okay, and combined you will have a five-minute presentation, and I'll okay. let you know when you're getting close. Great, thank you. Good evening, members of the board, Mayor Perez. Thank you for this opportunity to speak in front of you tonight. My name is Jennifer Stengel. On September 21st, or 921 of 1980, I was born in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. On September 21st, or 921, of 1975, Anthony Bray was born in Newport, Vermont, and then moved to Sheboygan less than a year later. Between the two of us, we have called Sheboygan home for nearly 58 years. Tony began working at Bike and Ski in 1994. He already knew he loved the sport, so why not buy the business? For 11 years now, Tony's owned and operated Bike and Ski, and thoroughly enjoyed helping the people of Sheboygan and its many visitors utilize bikes for recreation, transportation, and competition. Through his many years with Bike and Ski, Tony has been able to give back to the community by helping sponsor hundreds of charity events throughout Sheboygan County, including PCW Cycling, the Maywood Earth Ride, where he was also a board member, um, co-race director of the Wigwam Ultimax Mountain Bike Challenge, he was a past board member of the Heritage Square Criterium, and also original member of Fat Cats Mountain Bike Club, and a major donor of the Sharon Richardson Hospice House. My history starts about 12 years ago with my first job at Nikki's Pizza on Michigan Avenue. Since then, I've had many jobs in the food service industry, including third shift supervisor at Country Kitchen, which always kept me on my toes, and many, uh, excuse me, many positions at the American Club in Black Wolf Run, where I learned the appropriate service standards for a four-star, five-diamond resort. Most recently, with our new after, or before our new adventure of 921 Bar and Grill, I bartended and cooked downtown at a very popular grill for nearly five years, where I really got to know the Sheboygan people and how truly great they are. Through the establishment, I was able to participate in Brat Days, Four Bar Fest, Futsy Fest, Grapes and Gourmet, which is Sheboygan's upscale wine club, and the Rotary Concert Series. On December 29th of 2006, Tony and I purchased an historic building in Sheboygan, the Old Poth Meat Market. 
Having been vacant and very run down for the past two years, we decided to put our time, money, sweat, and hearts into this project. We've been doing all of the renovations ourselves with assistance from the proper licensed trades and a couple of close friends. Once our doors open, we intend on continuing this trend by working as much as possible. Not only are we the investors, but Tony and I will be the ones serving drinks, making lunches, and entertaining the people of Sheboygan and its many visitors. A few other points we would like to bring up. 921 Bar and Grill is a primarily minority-owned business. 921 is the only business applying that does not already have control of some form of intoxicating beverage license. 921 will be the first of these businesses to open. And Sheboygan's population is growing to the south. Unfortunately, there aren't many new establishments to address the dining needs of these people. So, in conclusion, we would like to ask the Common Council for help in granting 921 Bar and Grill the permission to apply for the remaining liquor license. With this help, we look forward to opening the doors of 921 Bar and Grill, not only as a restaurant and, grill, or restaurant and bar, but as an upscale destination for the people and businesses of the south side of Sheboygan. Thank you all for your time and consideration. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Anybody else want? Okay, next we have, I believe, uh, Mr. Guess. Oh, uh, Vice President Moore, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Next we'll have a presentation from the field house at South Pier, Spikes Sports Bar. Attorney Gass, please come up, sir. Thank you, Vice President Board. And can I get your name, sir? Sure. Dave Gass. And Gary Poole, P-O-O-L-E. Okay. And Mayor you... Perez and members of the Common Council and staff members, uh, thank you for the time to present to you. Uh, before I get started, I know I'm gonna, the five minutes is going to go so fast, but I need to say something. Um, we've gone through two law and license committee meetings, and we were vying. There were three people vying for this, and we had made a decision, our group had made a decision last Friday that we were under the impression there was only one license. And we recognized that 921 was going to open before we would. And so we were in support, and we are in support of if there is only one license to grant tonight, that they would get that license. We hope that we would get the next one. If there is another one available, that'd be great. But we want to make that comment because we believe that they have a great product and, and they're right to open up, so go for it. Um, now, what are we here for? Um, triple Play. You all know Triple Play, the building over in the South Pier. Um, who is Triple Play? Triple Play Real Estate is a group of local investors. Gary happens to be one of them. And Gary, uh, the investors um, own the, the building, lease the land, and we had an operator in there called Triple, uh, Triple Play Fund Zone. Um, as time went on, and particularly around May and June, it became clear that the uh, forum that they were promoting, which was um, the Fund Zone on the first floor and the Academy on the second floor, just wasn't generating sufficient revenue to make um, all of the obligated payments. And it became clear that we had to do something different. And at that point, the Triple Play real estate guys stepped in and said, we need to make a change here. And they looked and studied real hard as to what we needed to do. And it became clear that what had to happen was the first floor had to become a remain family oriented, and the second floor had to become a multi-purpose facility. It was really pretty vacant. So, well, uh, they say a picture is worth a thousand words, so let me pull out some pictures. Um, here is the upside down <laughs> version. Um, here is the current building as you see it. Um, the only thing that's different about this from what you see is that um, you would, we would be opening or putting an entrance in the corner to get to the second floor and be redesigning the front entrance here and doing some internal things that I'll show you in a moment. Um, here is the second floor. Right now, <laughs> thank you. Uh, the second floor. Right now, this is here. This is a big grass area. If you've not been up there, and this is all vacant. Okay. The idea here is to make this um, um, a multi-purpose facility with an emphasis on volleyball, and then put in a sports bar here, which would service this area. Um, and then be able to offer all, offer all kinds of sporting activities, again, with an emphasis on volleyball. And here's another diagram that kind of shows this a little bit more detail. You can look at it later on time to go through all of it. Um, Gary has been real instrumental in this. Gary owns, um, did own, and I think now is the happy successor and seller, of a, a bar, a restaurant, uh, volleyball facility in Madison called Pooley's. Very successful, very much like this. And, when Gary came up and we looked at this, realized that that was the facility. It was just ready for that kind of facility. So 
we're in that process of changing it over. In order to do that, there's a number of challenges that we have to meet. One, there's got to be physical improvements that are undertaken. There were some past issues that had to be cleaned up with the city, and those are, been, are being cleaned up or will be cleaned up. Um, funding is another issue that they've been working on, and we've got that all kind of pulled together. Um, one other key item was a liquor license. Whether you like the idea of serving hard liquor or not, the reality is, is you have to have a facility that can serve a wide range of beverages in a facility like this. Um, so that's why we're here to apply for that, that license. Um, our group, the investor group, is really, um, I think they're really enthusiastic about this. It's, there, there are a lot of risks associated with this. Um, but as they've said a number of times, the project is not going to fail for lack of trying. And that's what they're trying to do right now, is, is convert this as quickly as possible and get it up and running. Um, the goal of this is to have it have a soft opening in October, a hard opening before Thanksgiving. And what's also be critical to the success of this facility is bringing people in from outside the city of Sheboygan. Um, if we don't get people in from outside, it's going to be real tough. You cannot, we, we're not here to recirculate the customers in town. We need to bring people in and down there. So that's the reason for applying for this license in particular, and we again would ask for your uh, favorable reaction to the next license that becomes available uh, to do that. Um, we're happy to answer any questions if you have any. Otherwise, we appreciate the opportunity to speak with you. Uh, one thing I should mention, we also re renamed it. You might have seen that we're going to rename it from Triple Play to Fieldhouse at South Pier. Um, Here's kind of a diagram of what it looks like. The restaurant on the second floor is going to be called Spike's Restaurant and Grill. Um, a nice sort of appealing little image there. Um, so that's, the, that's, that's a part of the, the, the facelift and the change to bring the broader audience. So I probably exceed my time. Five minutes. Oh, Nadisha. Thank you. They ran out of time, so no. No, no this will be quick. Uh, <laughs> uh, this was really a, a neat happening that just happened here. Here you had two people vying for the same license, and I know the committee's been working really hard on this. And here one says, give it to my neighbor up the street, and I'll take a chance on the next one. Uh, that, uh, that, that's remarkable, because that's risk on these guys' part that does that. And uh, it's a risk that, uh, that I, I, I feel, and from my own personal standpoint, uh, isn't much of a risk, because that was a very gracious thing your group did. And uh, that should not be left unnoticed. Thank you. Alderman Ryan. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I don't know if this is my position to say this, but uh, I guess uh, no uh, good deed uh, goes unnoticed. Uh, we do have uh, two licenses available, I understand. Uh, another license became available, so there are two license, licenses available. I don't know the, the uh, uh, details of it, but uh, as long as uh, the council can vote to issue two licenses tonight, according to Attorney McLean, uh, we do have two licenses. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Vice President Bourne, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I want to uh, publicly thank uh, Alderman Ryan for some of his uh, work behind the scenes over the weekend to make this second license uh, become available. So I want to thank you, Alderman Ryan. And also uh, uh, Deputy City Attorney Chuck Adams and also Madam City Clerk. I want to thank them for their efforts also. Uh, I want to make a, mo uh, a motion to give 921 Bar and Grill the right to apply for the available liquor license. There's a motion and a second. Under discussion. Under discussion, uh, I remember back uh, over 30 years ago when I opened up a business in Sheboygan. And I want to wish uh, Mr. Bray and Ms. Stengel a lot of luck. And the only request that I have is that when you're considering your tap beers for your establishment, <laughs> that you consider putting Guinness on tap. <laughs> Thank you. Charge them double. <laughs> there is a motion to second. There's under discussion. We have, I believe, Alderman Belk. Thank you, Your Honor. Yes. Just wonder if it's appropriate to offer an amendment to uh, indicate that the uh, second group should uh, be offered the opportunity to apply for the second open license and vote for them both at once. I, I think that'd be fine. If you'd like to make that motion? Yes, sir. There's a, is there a second to that? Second. So the motion uh, is to amend the previous motion to grant the right to apply 
to 921 and that the next available license be offered or be grant offered to triple is it triple play again? No, spikes. Spikes. Okay. On the motion to amend, discussion on the motion to amend only. Alderman Manny, do you wish to discuss the motion to amend? No. Alderman Renfleisch, on the motion to amend. Yes, the motion to amend. Um, if the motion is to grant permission for both businesses to apply for both licenses, or, uh, then I'm, I'm in favor of that. But we can't really bind future committee or future council to say the next available license. We do happen to have two licenses, is that correct? That is correct. So if the motion is to change to apply for both current licenses available, I'll, I'll second that. Otherwise, I think it's probably inappropriate. I think that's what he intended. That, that's okay. <clears throat> okay. Okay. On, on the amendment, then only. Oh, Vice President Bourne. No. No? On the amendment. Any further discussion? Motion is to amend. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Now I need a motion to Vice President Bourne to pass as amended. Make a motion to pass as amended. Second. second. Motion then second. Any discussion on that? Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. Just wanted to share a couple of comments because uh, of the situation. It was very difficult for law and licensing uh, through two meetings to evaluate well and to decide. We had a split vote twice with Alderman Wangerman uh, abstaining because of a friendship he had with one of the involved parties with, with the field house. So it was appropriate to bring this whole thing here. Background issues, though, are terribly important, and we need to reinforce those for the public and for the council, as other folks will be serving on that committee in years to come. Number one, we have a certain number of licenses. When we give those out, perhaps historically, we've been too quick to do so. We need to be choosy and not necessarily say yes to those who come to us if we have available licenses. As a case in point, by way of example, 921 is doing renovation. They're upgrading a neighborhood as they do that. They're building a business that's adding capital and quality to a neighborhood. That's the kind of businesses we want in this city. That hasn't always been the case for people opening up establishments. So I think we need to honor that. And you can see their new place when it's finished soon. If you want to see the quality of the work that Anthony Bray does, walk into Bikenski because he redid that place himself with friends previously. They upgraded that building as well. So that kind of quality, private, individual entrepreneurship we want to encourage and value. And licenses that go to small establishments, I think, in the future, need to go to those who are improving and building the community and not simply opening the door with an establishment that's borderline. Um, the other issue I want to highlight is that we as a growing destination community are limited in the number of licenses that we have available. With increasing numbers of out of town folks coming here, hopefully and increasingly over these years to come, we all know, or at least many of us know, that state law is being considered and needs to be addressed to perhaps facilitate that kind of transition and enable such communities to have more licenses than we currently have available. So along that line, as we speak with our state representatives and our state senator, we need to encourage them to look at that kind of legislation coming down the line, to recognize a changing society and our changing position as a destination city. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Manny. We have President Hanna. One more. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to publicly thank both of the organizations for investing in our city. I think uh, both the both of the organizations are going to be welcome additions uh, to the quality of life here in Sheboygan. And I'm just, it's so nice to see the competition to be part of this. And I just, I'm so grateful that this has turned out to be a, a solution that we can all be pleased with. Thank you, President Hanna. Okay, there is no more. Please call the roll. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Smith. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Bourne. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hanna. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Kleunis. Aye. Manny. Aye. And Meyer. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1139 by 
Public Works. Or, oh, Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just a housekeeping thing for the applicants. Uh, if you would apply, you need to apply within seven days. You know, I, I don't think that would be a problem, but just that you do apply within seven days so that... Uh, okay, thank you. <laughs> Eleven thirty-nine by Public Works, recommending filing resolution authorizing the Motor Vehicle Committee, Finance Committee, and Public Works Committee to study and report back to the council on the potential uses of some portion of the Motor Vehicle Fund. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Is there a second to that? Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. I'm sorry, Alderman Rehassel, I didn't catch you. Sir, would you like to speak? Yeah, I just I was just going to ask Alderman Meyer if she could explain a little bit of the findings, I guess, from the Public Works Committee on this document. Okay. Oh, then we're taking a, I apologize, I didn't catch the light. So, Alderman Meyer, let me hold, let me click you on here. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, the Public Works Committee is uh, has accepted what the motor vehicle fund uh, committee has put forward. Um, they were part of the motor vehicle fund committee also, so they had input in the way we are going to spend this money, and Public Works is, is fine with, with this, and it will be coming to committee of the whole in the future, so we will have a lot of discussion on this. Okay. You may want to stay standing up. 1140 by Public Works recommending filing resolution authorizing the Public Works Committee to study and report back to the council on the various costs and capabilities of security cameras for possible use in the city's park system. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Motion and second to accept and adopt 1140. Any discussion? Alderman Verhassel. Thank you, Your Honor. Again, I'm looking just for a little background from the committee on this, seeing that uh, I guess I feel strongly from the standpoint, Sheridan Park, for example, we just invested 150,000 roughly dollars, 300 and some thousand dollars in the surrounding area. And Parks got a big investment. King Parks got an investment coming up. We're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars. And the little bit of uh, research I've done into this says that a camera is going to cost somewhere between three to 5,000. So I guess I feel strongly that we should go ahead with cameras. But I wanted to hear what the committee. Alderman Meyer, please respond. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, this money that we have, we have found has come through Paulette Enders, and it is grant money. And they will be subject to certain um, criteria. Certain parks will only be eligible for this money. And this is also going to the Park and Forestry Commission to decide what parks will be, you know, that should be used first for the money. Okay. I don't Thank know if that... So if I understand right, the committee, the committee, the Public Works Committee is not necessarily against cameras. You're just looking to defer this to the CDBG funds? Is that? Hold on, hold on. We, let's not call the department heads. We're not back and forth here. We're addressing the chair. We're okay. Alderman right. Meyer. Um, yes, this, is, this money is going to come from the grant money. And um, because we do not have you know, all the money to put cameras in every park. So the, the Sheridan Park is definitely on the list for that type of um, grant money. So, like I said, it will go into Park and Forestry and they will be discussing it. Um, Paul Meyer will be there, the, our city forester, and they will come up with recommendations as to which parks we should put the cameras in. And yes, Sheridan Park is definitely on the list to be looked at. It's also a qualifying park from the standpoint of the threshold of uh, low and moderate income. And that's how we got that 13th Street paved and the fence put up. So the chances are very good. Okay, anything else? We have a motion to accept and adopt 1140. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Ordinance is introduced 10, 1141 through 1145 lies over. 1146 through 1158 to be referred. Matters laid over 11, 1044, resolution number 90. 0708 by Alderman Montemayor, supporting an application by Sheboygan County to the Sheboygan County Non-Motorized Transportation Pilot Program to fund bicycle racks. 1145 is basically the same thing. Would you like to take both, Alderman Montemayor? Thank you, Your Honor. Yes, please. I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage and resolution on agenda item 1045 be put upon its passage. And let's hope that the federal government gives some of that money to the county pretty soon. Well, it's a county board, so. Yes. 1144, 1145. 
we put upon his patches? Second. Any discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Renfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. For Hasselt? Aye. Warren? Aye. Falk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Kleunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. And Montemayor? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1146, resolution number 920708 by Alderman Hannah, Boren, Clayunas, Bauk, and Gisha, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2007 budget, establishing estimated revenue and appropriation for contribution received for Independence Day activities and establishing appropriations for printing and distribution of the official statement for the police facility general obligation bonds. President Hannah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Falk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Kleunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. And Rinfleisch? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1047. Resolution number 930708 by Alderman Hanna, Boren, Clayunas, Bauk, and Gisha, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2007 budget, establishing appropriations for the purchase of furniture for the TV8 set. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would, put, I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Smith. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hanna. Heidemann, Kittleson, Clayunas, Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Rinfleisch, and Ryan. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1053, General Ordinance Number 2707-08 by Alderman Boren, Wangeman, Clayunas, Manny, and Rinfleisch amending the code so as to regulate the pawn shop industry in the city of Sheboygan. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I would make a motion that the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Under discussion, uh, we had a, a quite a lengthy discussion about this issue in the uh, Law and Licensing Department, and I noticed that uh, Officer Kurt Zempel is here tonight from the uh, from the Police Department, and I would uh, like to uh, open up the floor to a non-department head if I could make a motion. Second. Motion and second. And I would like Alderman Zempel uh, to just give a. Officer Zempel, <laughs> excuse me. Okay. Officer, what did I say? Okay. Oh, officer. Okay. We, yeah, Officer Zempel, uh, to just give us some background on what brought this ordinance about with a previous okay. operator that we had in the city. Okay, we need to take a vote on that motion and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Officer Zempel, the mic is on. It must be how I'm dressed. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to address you, and uh, I know uh, this is something I've been kind of looking forward to, so I'm kind of excited that this is about to happen. Um, I certainly want to thank the members of the Law and Licensing Committee for their work on this and uh, for your openness to a change in our pawn shop ordinance. Uh, I should also thank Assistant City Attorney Chuck Adams for his work and for uh, allowing me to pester him for the last several months about this as well. So. Um, I guess if you're looking for a little bit of background, I'll try to explain the history behind this as briefly as possible and some justification for why it took place. Um, Wisconsin statutes require the licensing of pawnbrokers by municipalities, and Sheboygan's current ordinance mirrors the requirements of state law. Uh, but the statute was written probably some decades ago with little change since, and uh, I think it probably fails to recognize some of the changes that have taken place in technology and also um, the way that we have to uh, manage and uh, um, investigate property crimes uh, as police departments. And uh, since our ordinance hasn't changed either, we're missing an opportunity to better regulate pawn shops for Sheboygan. Um, I know that for me personally anyway, the word regulation kind of makes me cringe, and I'm sure it does for some of you as well, but I think it's worth saying that the reason that pawn shops are licensed and regulated is for the state and municipalities to provide consumer protection and to discourage criminal activity that this type of a business just lends itself to. And until earlier this year, I think the one pawn shop that we had in Sheboygan was, I think it's fair to say, uh, the poster child for why regulation is necessary. Um, as you may recall, TJ's Pawn Shop was in operation on Michigan Avenue for several years. 
uh, until earlier this year when our department and the city attorney's office cited the owner for over $104,000 worth of violations of our pawn, excuse me, of our pawn shop ordinance. Um, and also arrested him for a criminal offense. It's a misdemeanor to accept pawns from a minor, and uh, we had a violation of that as well. Uh, this effectively shut down his business for good. Um, but the problems at TJ's went much further than the violations that we were able to arrest and attempt to prosecute. I'm assigned to our department's street crimes unit, and as a result, I have the opportunity to speak with and hear from a wide range of informants who provide information on criminal activity in the city. Uh, we've been hearing for some time from a variety of sources um, that uh, TJ's was not only a clearinghouse for stolen property from numerous burglaries and thefts around town, but that the owner was also directly involved in trafficking drugs, including marijuana and cocaine, and was trading drugs for stolen property inside the store. We also learned that he was selling cigarettes to neighborhood children for a quarter apiece, and that many of those neighborhood children, who shouldn't have even been you know, allowed in the store, since the sign on the door says no one under 18, uh, we're bringing property into exchange for cash. In one instance, there was a 12-year-old who uh, took his family's computer without his parents' com permission, and it was accepted at the pawn shop without much question. Even without these allegations, the record-keeping system kept by TJ's was cryptic at best, and I think designed to frustrate law enforcement in the event that a stolen property complaint led us to his shop. The system was to keep several stacks of pawn slips out on the counter in various letter, and in various letter racks on the wall nearby. And the different stacks represented pawns that were current, ones that were late, ones that were making payments, and yet another stack for property that the owner had purchased outright. Uh, behind the counter, in, in, just by coincidence the day that I was there, in two plastic shopping bags on the floor, there were hundreds more additional slips which I were told were from previous years and were ready to go to the store's accountant. I can't imagine what that job must be like. Uh, <laughs> both state law and our current ordinance have specific requirements about the information that has to be recorded with each pawn transaction and for obvious reasons you want to know at a minimum who is bringing in an item for pawn. And just looking through the store's current slips on the countertop one day earlier this year we discovered more than a hundred unique violations of these requirements most of which were due to the archaic and wholly inadequate record keeping on part of the owner. Since Sheboygan is currently without a pawn shop, I think we have a unique opportunity to improve our ordinance and to potentially avoid many of the problems that we were dealing with in the past. Of course, no amount of regulation will completely prevent the potential for criminal activity down the road, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't give our city the best chance at holding it off, and I think that these proposed changes to the ordinance can reasonably and fairly accomplish that. The first significant change is requiring pawnbrokers to use the com a computerized system called the Automated Pawn System. It's a system that started in the Minneapolis area in cooperation with their police department and which has been adopted by over 160 municipalities throughout the Midwest, mostly in Wisconsin and Minnesota. Uh, it allows law enforcement agencies instant daily access to transactions received and it's a cost-effective way to investigate property crimes. At a bare minimum, it'll be a huge step forward in the record-keeping system for pawn transactions and be much more accessible for police to investigate property crimes. Agencies that are already using it report overwhelming increases in their rates, uh, recovery rates of stolen property, some as much as 240% increase in recovery of stolen property, and uh, substantial reductions in the cost to investigate such crimes as well. The second change in the ordinance that's being uh, requested tonight is uh, requiring a $2,500 surety bond from any licensed pawnbroker. Uh, this is, I think, a really reasonable requirement, again, because of the propensity for pawnbrokers to be used for criminal activity, whether they know it or not. Um, you know, sometimes these transactions take place without them really being held blameless. The city already requires bonding for contractors in order to comply with local codes um, and to ensure their performance of their contracted duties. So this is no stretch for the city. This is something we already do. Uh, and our experience with TJ's certainly demonstrates that in addition to uh, you know, the added protection for the city, an extra incentive for the pawnbroker to comply with the licensing requirements can only help. In short, I think these changes give Sheboygan the opportunity to take advantage of available technology and common sense solutions to protect people from both the potential of underhanded practices by pawnbrokers and from the atmosphere of easy money derived from stolen property that it can create. If we remove the incentive of an easy fence for stolen property, number one, by giving law enforcement the tools to efficiently investigate these cases by improving the record keeping, and number two, by discouraging pawnbrokers from engaging in such transactions, number one, because of the st more stringent reg record keeping requirements and because of the surety bond requirement, then we're a step closer to preventing burglaries, thefts, and robberies in the first place. Thank you. 
Okay. I guess if there are any questions that I can help answer to, I'd be more than happy. President uh, Hanna. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a great presentation. Just a question. Uh, $2,500 in a surety bond, was that, how did you come up with that That number? Is that, a, a, I would, since I would be more comfortable with a higher number. Um, I probably would too, but uh, that's a question I can't answer. That was something that uh, t Attorney Adams had come okay. up with. Thank you. Thank you. Vice President Borden. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this, or this ordinance that we're proposing tonight is modeled after one in Eau Claire, so I can't speak for Attorney Adams, but I would imagine that that must be a similar amount that's being, been used, being used mm -hmm. in other communities. Okay. Thank you, Officer. Here we Temple. So we have 1053-270708. There's a motion and a second to put that ordinance upon its passage. Please call the roll. For Hasselt? No. Warren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clyunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. 13 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. 1054, General Ordinance Number 280708 by Alderman Vanderweel, Rinfleisch, Ryan, Serta, and Kittleson relating to two-hour parking limits to add a two-hour parking limit Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., except Saturday, Sunday, and holidays along the north side of Michigan Avenue near 8th Street. Alderman Vanderweel is not here. Alderman Renfleisch. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I ask that we put the uh, ordinance upon its passage. Second. Motion second to put 1054 upon its passage. Under discussion. Uh, simply under discussion. Uh, this came up through... Uh, a communication with the business owner in the area uh, that there's very limited parking uh, for multiple businesses that require traffic, uh, so we're hoping to uh, limit that parking. Um, it should be noticed that it is only during business hours, generally 8 to 5, meaning that the residents in the area still have the ability to park at night and in the weekends. Thank you very much. Any further discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Kleinus? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Rinfleisch, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Smith, Aye. and Verhasselt. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1055, General Ordinance Number 290708 by Alderman Vanderweel, Rinfleisch, Ryan, Serta, and Kittleson relating to two hour parking zones so as to amend the two hour parking zones as follows. The existing two hour parking zone, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., Monday through Friday except Saturday, Sunday, and holidays, is extended to the entire south side of North Avenue between North 6th Street and North 7th Street, except that the existing posted bus stop remains. Alderman Rinfleisch. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Bauk. <clears throat> Excuse me. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunas. Aye. Manny. Meyer, Montemayor, Rinfleisch, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Smith, Aye. Verhasselt, Aye. and Boren. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters? Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. 1159 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2008 and June 30, 2009. That will be referred to law and licensing. 1160 is a committee report by Public Works Committee. Uh, indicating they met, discussed RC number 1260708 by the Motor Vehicle Committee's recommendation and concurs with all the committee recommendations. Matt, will I over? 1161 is also a committee report from the Public Works Committee indicating that they met and discussed resolution 3170708 oh, regarding the various costs and capabilities of security cameras for city parks. That will also lie over? 1162 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Robert Heimrell, 1880 Development, LLC, stating that they'll be doing a rehab project at 817 821 Michigan Avenue and asking for assistance from the city, such as selling the city-owned parking to them south and slightly west of the above address, having some help with parking needs at 1135 Michigan Avenue. That will be referred to finance. Need a motion to adjourn? 
Motion and second to adjourn. Alderman Bout. Thank you. Discussion to adjourn. I just want to uh, offer to my colleagues. Uh, I think we we ran a first-rate meeting tonight. I think that there was a lot of civil rhetor uh, civic rhetoric going on. There were a lot of disagreements, but we disagreed like neighbors. And uh, I want to thank my colleagues for a, a, a meeting of great content. There were some great procedural questions, some great questions of slippery slopes and precedent. And uh, but when we disagreed, we disagreed like neighbors. And uh, I think we did some good business tonight too. So thank you. Aaron. Well said, Alderman Bob. Thank you very much. All in favor, of adjourning. Say aye. aye. Any opposed? Stand adjourned.